Hello, today's screencast is part three of the series about phase diagrams. This screencast will cover the iron iron carbide phase diagram as an introduction. In phase diagrams one, we talked about the eutectic reaction and using the Lieberver rule to do calculations, and that video's annotation is up here. In phase diagrams two, we talked about eutectic microstructures, and that video is up there. Watching these videos will help you understand this one. In this screencast, we will attempt to answer the following muddiest points taken directly from students. What is the difference between eutectoid, hypoeutectoid, and hypereutectoid? What are ferrite, austenite, and cementite? Reading the phase diagram was very tough, so I will explain the different reactions that happen on it and how to read it. I don't know what 1020, 1060, or 10100 steel means. And what does each phase represent? For example, what is gamma? So if there's a particular topic that you wish to see, there are a lot of annotations down here. Let's get started. Before we take a look at the different reactions that are occurring on the iron, iron carbide phase diagram, we need to describe the characteristics of important phases on the phase diagram. So I have chosen austenite, ferrite, and cementite also known as iron carbide, as the important phases that I will discuss. Austenite is also known as gamma, or gamma iron. It is face-centered cubic iron with interstitial solid solution of carbon up to 2.14 weight percent carbon. And here is what it would look like. Austenite is found in this region, this region of the phase diagram, and it is a solid, just so we're clear. The next important phase is ferrite, also known as alpha, or alpha iron. It is body-centered cubic iron with interstitial solid solution of carbon up to 0.022 weight percent carbon. So here is what its structure would look like. It is found in this part right here of the phase diagram. To repeat, it's also a solid. The last important phase that will be discussed is carbide, also known as cementite, or iron carbide. Carbide is a hard and brittle stoichiometric compound, Fe3C. Stoichiometric means it has a fixed composition, so it is not a solid solution. It is a compound. It has an orthorhombic crystal structure, and it is found over here, over here, at 6.7 or 6.67 weight percent carbon, depending on how accurate you need to be. Now that we've talked about the characteristics of austenite, ferrite, and cementite, we are going to cover the three primary reactions that are occurring on this iron-iron carbide phase diagram. But before we cover those three reactions, we need to learn how to read the phase diagram. On the y-axis over here, we have our temperature in degrees Celsius, and over here we have our composition in weight percent carbon, increasing as we go this way. So here's zero, this would be, you know, pure iron, and then over here would be pure iron carbide. And so now that we know how to read it, we can cover our three main reactions. The first reaction that we are going to cover occurs up here in this corner of the iron-iron carbide phase diagram. It is a paratectic reaction, which means that liquid plus solid one cools into solid two. In this case, it would be liquid and delta cools into gamma. Now, we didn't talk about delta, but delta is a high temperature iron occurring in this part of the phase diagram, and it is body-centered cubic. And this reaction is very important. However, the focus of this screencast is going to be more about this reaction down here, which we will cover in a little bit. The next important reaction that occurs on this phase diagram is a eutectic reaction. It occurs right over here at the temperature 1147 degrees Celsius. As done in the previous videos, a eutectic reaction is when a liquid cools down into a solid one plus solid two. In the case of this phase diagram, the liquid cools into gamma plus carbide. Cast irons are found in the compositional vicinity 
of this region of the iron iron carbide phase diagram. An important number to take away from this part of the graph is that the solubility limit of carbon in austenite is shown right here. It is 2.14 weight percent carbon. Although cast iron is very important, the focus of this video is going to be on the eutectoid reaction down here, which we will cover right now. The third reaction that takes place on the iron iron carbide phase diagram is the eutectoid reaction. It is when solid 1 cools into solid 2 plus solid 3. In the case of the iron iron carbide phase diagram, it is when gamma cools down into alpha plus iron carbide. It occurs right here on the phase diagram. Another way to say this is that austenite cools into ferrite plus cementite. The reason why this video focuses on the eutectoid reaction is because we get steels in the compositional vicinity of this reaction. As will be covered later, there are a lot of applications for steels. Now that we've covered the iron-iron carbide phase diagram as a whole, we're going to focus in on the eutectoid reaction. Again, this is a close-up of the eutectoid reaction on the iron-iron carbide phase diagram. Again, this is because it's where we get steel. To repeat, the eutectoid reaction is when solid 1 cools into solid 2 plus solid 3. The temperature at which the eutectoid reaction takes place is called the eutectoid temperature. It occurs at 727 degrees Celsius for the iron-iron carbide phase diagram. Again, that's this line right here. The eutectoid composition is the composition at which the eutectoid reaction takes place. Again, to find it, we go where they all the lines intersect, go down to the bottom and read it off, this value down here. For the iron-iron carbide phase diagram, the eutectoid composition is 0.76 weight percent carbon. In addition, if you have a composition that is below the eutectoid composition, we call that hypo-eutectoid. If the composition is above the eutectoid composition, we call that hyper-eutectoid. Moving on to the single phase regions of the iron-iron carbide phase diagram, over here is where we find alpha. Remember alpha is ferrite and it is BCC iron with interstitial carbon up to 0 0.022 weight percent carbon and we got that 0 0.022 weight percent carbon from this here. This orange line is the solubility limit of carbon in alpha. So that is where these 0 0.022 weight percent maximum came from. Here we have single phased gamma. Gamma is austenite and it is FCC iron with interstitial carbon up to 2.14 weight percent carbon. We found that 2.14 when we were looking at the entire phase diagram. It's not shown, it's somewhere up here. Moving on to carbide. Notice that there isn't a region for carbide or cementite. The reason why that is is because iron carbide or cementite is a fixed composition, stoichiometric, so there isn't a region. It is simply at the line 6.67 weight percent carbon, so you find your carbide all along this line right over there. Again, no region, but that's because it is stoichiometric. Moving on to the two phase regions, here we have alpha plus gamma, over here we have gamma plus carbide, and down here we have alpha plus carbide. It is important to note that all one, two, three, four, five of these regions are solids. So now that you know about the different regions of the steel portion of the iron iron carbide phase diagram, let's learn some properties about these single phase regions so we can learn about their applications. Ferrite, which you know what it is already, it is ductile, so this region, alpha, is ductile. Austenite, or gamma, is also ductile, again gamma, this region up here, but cementite, or carbide, is stoichiometric and it's hard and a brittle ceramic again found along this line right there. In the United States we classify steels using the Society of Automotive Engineers or SAE slash American Iron and Steel Institute AISI system so that way we can understand what type of steel we're looking at. It is a four or five digit number. The first two or three digits so the Y's give you your alloy type uh, one zero is plain carbon steel, and that is probably 
the most important one that you recognize as another example of what could be the first two digits for one is a common alloy steel, which is chromium and libdenum. However, there are a lot of different numbers that could occur. So look at this website for more information. The second two or three digits give percent carbon content times 100. So basically what that means, if you've got 80, the steel has 0.8 weight percent carbon because 0.8 times 100 equals 80. And again, if you have, you know, some something something 100, the steel has one weight percent carbon. So as an example, if I have one zero seven zero, so ten seventy carbon steel, I have plain carbon steel with 0.7 weight percent carbon. And if I have say four one two five steel, I have the chromium molybdenum alloy steel with 0.25 weight percent carbon. Another way that we classify steels is based off of their carbon content taken from AISI. Low carbon would be less than 0.3 weight percent carbon, so it'd be uh, about there, so this region right there. Medium carbon would be 0.3 to 0.6 weight percent carbon, so in that region over there. High carbon would be 0.6 to 1 percent carbon, so there we go, in that region. And then ultra high carbon would be from 1.25 to 2 weight percent carbon. So this region up there. And the reason why we classify steels this way is so that we can know what applications that we are going to use them for, which we will cover right now. Different steel types are best suited for different applications because they have different properties. The reasons for these properties will be covered in the next slide, but for right now just accept that different types of steels have different properties. Low carbon steels are used for automobile body panels and low strength wires, so low carbon steel is generally low strength. Medium carbon steel is used for axles, gears, railway wheels, a lot of different things, so that's just an example. High carbon steel is used for applications where strength is necessary, so for strings and high strength wires. For one xx alloy steels, they're used for components in fossil fuel and nuclear power plants. However, I can't make that generalization for all alloy steels. The alloys change the properties of the steel, and if you would like to know about a particular alloy steel or more applications, check out this website right down there. It's very useful. We've already seen the various applications for the different types of carbon steels, and we've kind of foreshadowed that different carbon contents make different properties, but how exactly does the carbon content affect the mechanical properties? Let's look at some graphs to find out. On this graph here, we have our yield and tensile strength on our y-axis and our composition or weight percent carbon on the x-axis. So as weight percent carbon increases going this way, we can see that tensile strength increases and yield strength also increases. Moving on to a different graph, this one over here, we have percent elongation on the y-axis and again composition weight percent carbon on the x-axis. And as the weight percent carbon increases, we can see that percent elongation, aka ductility, decreases. To summarize, as weight percent carbon goes up, yield and tensile strength both go up, and percent elongation, which is again ductility, goes down. This screencast has answered all of the muddiest points. We now know the difference between eutectoid, hypoeutectoid, and hypereutectoid. We know what ferrite, austenite, and cementite are. We know how to read the phase diagram, the different reactions on the phase diagram, and major phases on the phase diagram. We know all about the steel classification system, and we can also give some applications for each type of steel. We also know what each phase represents. We know what gamma, alpha, and carbide are. In phase diagrams part four, we are going to use what we learned from this screencast and use it to perform phase calculations as well as the associated microstructures. That way we can explain how the weight percent carbon affects the properties due to the microstructure. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and we'll see you in the next video.